What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here, and welcome to the GSD Mode Podcast, your most trusted resource to help you continue to grow and scale your real estate business where each and every single week, I'm delivering serious information for serious real estate professionals looking to get shit done and create serious results, all 100% free, nothing being sold, no BS, no fluff, no theory, just great, amazing content to help you again continue to level up inside your real estate business. Now, real quick, before we jump into today's content, there are four extremely important things that I want you to do that I want you to take action on right now. These will only take you seconds to do, but this will ensure that you are set up for maximum success, have access to all this great content, all these great free resources, uh, as well as to ensure that you are not missing out on all of the realtor to realtor referrals that are constantly and consistently taking place between all of our amazing GSD mode podcast listeners. All right. So number one, I want you to watching this on YouTube right now. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and then tap that notification bell. That will ensure that you are alerted every single time a new one of these uh, uh, a GSD mode uh, podcast is released. All right. So number two, wherever your go to podcast audio place is. So wherever you go to listen to your podcast app, I want you to pull up the GSD mode podcast and make sure to subscribe to it there. The GSD mode podcast is currently on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. And this will ensure and allow you to be able to listen to all this amazing content while you're driving, while you're working out, while you're on the go and all of that. All right, number three, make sure to join the GSD mode free Facebook mastermind group uh, where that, that you can then go in and mastermind with thousands and thousands of realtors, team leaders, broker owners, right? And the, again, you guys, these are all GSD mode podcast listeners uh, that are all seriously committed to leveling up inside their real estate business. Plus, I, I uh, create and have exclusive content and resources available to just that group alone can only be accessed inside that group doing Facebook lives and so forth. So I want to make sure that you don't miss out on that either. And then lastly, again, as I mentioned a moment ago, all the realtor to realtor referrals are taking place inside this GSD mode uh, Facebook group. So this will ensure that you do not miss out on any of those referrals. And look, if you don't find value on it, if you don't like the, once you jump in, if you're not seeing the value on it, if you think it's a distraction, right? Like, like it, it's harmless. You can just leave the group anytime that you want, right? So definitely go check that out and make sure that you join that group right away. Uh, I will uh, make sure that you are approved. I go in there once a day, every single day and approve all members and so forth. All right. Last thing. And I've saved the best for last. Make sure that you go snag my new book, Dominate Your Real Estate Business Top Tips from a Top Producer. Uh, these are, there's 42 tips, strategies uh, throughout this whole entire book. There's 100 pages. Each chapter is a different tip, a different strategy that are fully proven that uh, I've, I've implemented my business and that have allowed me to become one of the top realtors and team leaders on the planet and will 100% allow you and help you to be able to go out and dominate your real estate business as long as you implement and take action on what you learn. But you guys, these are gold. There's no stories in here. It's all, again, 100% free. So you can go snag your free copy right now at Joshua smithfreebook.com joshua smithfreebook.com now if you just scroll below if you're you know not not to be able to take it you're not able to take action on these now go into the notes you'll see all of these you can take action right then and there uh inside the notes but make sure that you take action on these so again you are set up fully for success and as i mentioned you guys nothing being sold no bs no fluff no theory just great resources great content great information to help you on this uh, success journey that we are all on and leveling up our real estate businesses all right let's jump on into today's epic amazing gsd mode podcast content what is up my peeps joshua smith here with another gsd mode podcast interview and today guys we are joined with another rock star guest tyler ford now, just to give a, a quick background before we jump in here on Tyler. Uh, so Tyler's been a, a licensed real estate agent in the state of Arizona for 30 years. So he got his real estate license when he was back in college. Um, then he, he, he pivoted and transitioned into the loan side of the business, still a licensed realtor, but jumped into the loan side of, of the industry uh, and quickly became the, the number one lender across the country um, uh, uh, within U.S. Uh, uh, or within the U.S. for, for home services, which is one of Warren Buffett's companies, uh, uh, mortgage companies and so forth. So number one with that company, one of the top whole entire nation out of, out of mortgage lenders, loan officers. Um, but then, <coughs> sorry, when the, 
great uh, uh the, the i almost call it the great reset the uh, uh, when the great recession, it kind of was <laughs> yeah yeah exactly another version of it but when when the great recession happened uh for those of you i mean we all probably experienced it in some capacity but those of you that were in the real estate business at that time you know 2007 2008 2009 um, uh, you saw the, the ugliness of that, what took place, and especially on the lending side, man, you know, I mean, of course, valuation, uh, real estate home prices dropped dramatically, you saw an increase in foreclosure, saw um, um, an increase in short sales, but uh, uh, the banking world got hit so severely, um, and we're under so much scrutiny during that time, and for good reason, um, uh, you know, but Tyler knew at that time, boom, it was, it was the right time for him to pivot uh, and focus on building, going to 100% focus on his a real estate career as a real estate agent and building that part of his business um, and runs today, runs a hybrid model, man. Um, um, so between uh, 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 is an investor and leveraging that in ways of also his traditional business. Um, and this, you guys, this leads to where he can do half the volume of most real estate agents and make twice as much amount of money um, and have more time and freedom, right? So um, also recently uh, wrote a book, which we'll talk about and, and uh, uh, we'll have links below so you guys can go check that out. You know, but with all that being said, Tyler, stoked and honored to have you on the podcast, my friend. Hey, I am so excited. I've been following you for years and uh, uh, gotten so much value out of what you share and the people that you bring on. So really appreciate you. Yeah, hundred percent, man. It truly means a lot, dude. And again, I'm, 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 you know, because we were talking off air <coughs> a little bit about, um, uh, you know, ju just the change in landscape of of the the real estate industry, you know, right? I mean, from technology, from these i buyers coming in, and and the pro consumers getting conditioned to have different options out there, and and uh, 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 you know, it's one of those things where we've got to shift and adapt, and and know the best ways to do that. And you've done a brilliant job at doing it. That's a win for everybody. Right, uh, uh, your 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 you know, let's just say your 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 real estate clients. It's a win for them, you know, right? Um, it's a win for you personally as well because as you said here you're able to to make double the money and in half the time and 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 go out there and have more time and freedom for you and your family and so forth. Um, you know, so I'm I'm excited to to jump in, man. Um, uh, so with that, like you've been in the business for 30 years, got your license right out of college. Uh, uh I'm curious. At what point did you start implementing this strategy? You know, right? Or, or you know, I mean, was it one of the, was your focus initially, uh, uh, whether before or after you know the the stint in the mortgage space? You know, was that was it initially focusing on traditional real estate and then slowly kind of eased into the investment side, or or was it you know always investor focus at the same time? Well, it was both. Right out of college, my parents helped me uh, buy my first foreclosure, so got my feet wet, had my license, and uh, and just always been uh, intrigued by real estate. Uh, when I was in college, they helped me buy. I had a little bit of money. We did an FHA, 3% kitty condo, and graduated from NAU and put like $40,000 in my pocket. And so like I was hooked on real estate right out of the gate, got my license while I was in college bought my first foreclosure, had my license. And then as I was doing the retail and the investment side of real estate, the lender that I was using, uh, First Magnus Financial, it was one of the biggest privately held mortgage companies in the country. Uh, the loan officer said, hey, you'd be great at the lending side of this. And and I uh, said, there's good money. And long, long and short of it, I got in, did really, really well. Uh, Home Services, which is a Warren Buffett company, uh, partnered with First Magnus. They brought me over to run the home services side, did really well. And then uh, when the market, I, I still did investments on the side and we built up about 30 doors. And in hindsight, I wish I would have kept all those. They were all on 15 year <laughs> mortgages, but sold them, did a 1031 exchange kind of at the height of the market. But when things melted down, I stepped away from the mortgage side uh, and then focused in on the retail side. Uh, did a lot of fix and flips and uh, something happened about five years ago on a fix and flip um, that the contractor that I'd been working with for years uh, that I totally trusted. My wife and I were going out of town for the summer and I prepaid him, loaded up a Home Depot card and came home and nothing was done and he was nowhere to be found. And I was kind of burned out, to be honest with you, you know, living at Home Depot, doing fix and flips, just bleeding cash and dealing with contractors. And although I lost $20,000, it was kind of a blessing in disguise and uh, decide that's when the market started to, to shift on the retail side with the iBuyers coming in. 
And I, I made a pivot then and just said I was going to totally revamp my business. I focused on organic SEO, evergreen marketing. No longer did. I haven't done a rehab since. Um, and so now all I do is I hotel where we'll, you know, we'll take them down and buy them. And then we just sell them as is, do a little bit of cleanup and sell them as is in the MLS. And so my model right now is kind of hybrid between the retail side and the investment side. Yeah, and I love that, man, and, and uh, definitely want to get deep into that. But before I do, you know, really curious with, you know, now, you're crushing it now, of course, and, and then through your real estate career, you're, 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 but you also crush it at an extremely high level on, on the mortgage side. You know, quickly became the number uh, 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 loan officer in the country for this large company that you're with. You know, I don't know what the exact numbers or standings were with all loan officers out there, but you know, I think it's safe to assume you were in the top one percent and one. Yeah, of the we top were doing about five hundred units a year. Or I was doing yeah. about five hundred loans a year, which you know, a lot of volume. So we were yeah, in all home that's... services. We were we we did almost double the amount of the next next team in home services. Yeah. So so um, and that's amazing, man. So you know, I, I guess my question goes to because. You know, uh, um, when I see people that that have had success in many different realms, you know, there, there, there are usually dots that they've connected. You know, there's usually some kind of main fundamentals that that are followed that allow them to have success. Like Warren Buffett, example. I mean, he's, you know, has this conglomerate of companies. Well, he's got, you know, some fundamental formulas that, that they follow that, that work good, even though the product and the industry might interchange, mm -hmm. you know, right? So, so I'm curious with that, man. I mean, what, you know, as you reflect back on all of this, you know, what, what do you think kind of those key things are that have allowed you to create success in, in now multiple spaces? Well, you know, early on in a lot of your podcasts, you hit on it. I think health and nutrition and vitality, you know, I'm way into health and nutrition, exercise, getting up early, getting it done, you know, without your health, I mean, you don't have the energy to, to do what you need to do at a high level. So, I mean, I put health and nutrition as, you know, a top priority, which gives me the energy to, to do what I need to do. Cause you know, to be at the top in anything, um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta have a clear mind. You gotta have, you gotta feel good. And I just, you know, I see so many people struggle just cause they don't take care of their health. So, I mean, I put that at a top priority, just, you know, work ethic and just hitting singles all day long and, and doing the, you know, the, 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 the little things every day that eventually lead up to the big things. Yep. Yep. And, and then, you know, kind of a follow up to that question. Um, uh, what, what are some of the things that you learned as a loan officer, you know, like doing that? Because I got to imagine with that volume, you know, it was like uh, uh, I didn't really understand the, the, the power of processes and systems right. until the market crashed. And, you know, I got in with all of these banks and short sales and handling you know, 350 some assets at any given time. And, and, you know, that to be able to handle that map volume, like, holy crap, like it, it, it showed me the importance of processes and systems and other things, you know, um, um, you know, what, what were some of the things that that experience taught you that have carried over that, uh, uh, you know, allowed you to be successful now, you know, full-time on the real estate side? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked this because, you know, I'm way into to processes and systems and when I was in the mortgage business, I started to get really busy right out of the gate. And, you know, I was going home totally exhausted and just tired because at the end of the day, in my opinion, if an agent's having to call, call a loan officer for updates, as a loan officer, you're not doing your job and being proactive. But, you know, if you take, let's say, 40 closings a month on the mortgage side and you multiply it by two agents, an escrow officer and your borrower, you know, that's a lot of people to communicate. And at the end of the day, my phone was blowing up every single day just based on, you know, where are we at status updates. And it used to just drive me nuts. And, you know, I, there was, the, and this is before technology really, you know, came on. This was in early 2000s. So anyway, my partner and I developed a product called I Am My Loan, which was an automated online system that anytime the status of the loan changed, 
it would email the both agents, the the escrow or the uh, the title agent and the borrower. Long and short of it, Home Services bought that product from us, uh, just because it was such a good system. So, you know, to answer your question, you know, having those systems in place are just key. And I mean, you teach that in your coaching and everything that you do. And without that, you can never scale, and you'll always be stuck where you're at. So. You know, and like I did a couple of years ago, every once in a while, you got to take a step back and work on those things in order to move in order to what you call level leveling up, I think, in order to level up, sometimes you got to pull back and, and, and close the door for about 30 days and, and work on all those things. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, having the right systems and processes and that, that kind of foundation allows you to, you know, slow down so then you can go fast. Exactly. Yeah, right. Um, and then allows you to just go out there and scale. I mean, a lot, it increases our capacity, but then also without those in place, like you can't hire the right people. You can't delegate out effectively. You can't inspect what you expect and, right. um, and so forth. So, um, um, okay. So then circling back to, to, you know, you talked about, you know, we got eye buyers coming in, you know, kind of in, in that your last flip deal, you know, kind of all of those things simultaneously happening, the light bulb went off, um, you know, for this model. Um, uh, uh, but before we jump into the model, man, like what are, what are some important things for anybody that's going to go down this path to, to deeply understand and know, you know, cause I'm a big believer in that, like, look, be, be prepared for like what you're getting yourself into, you know, right? Like, uh, um, if you, if you don't do these things or, or if you don't understand this or know this, you can get yourself in trouble. Like here, here's, you know, like, I mean, what are, what are some of the things for, to, to really maybe prepare for before jumping into this style of a strategy? Well, again, for me, it's about setting realistic expectations. Um, and especially for the way I do it, it takes time because I focus on evergreen marketing, organic SEO. And I see so many people, they get started down that path. They don't get the results within the first 30 to 60, even 90 days, and they just, they quit. So I think it's so important to uh, set realistic expectations up front. And I've got a little formula because people would come to me and say, you know, what is it you were doing? And I couldn't articulate it. I'm like, well, geez, what, it, what is it that I'm doing? And I came up with what I call my 261 formula to success. And it's just being realistic and how long it's going to take and then putting in the work early on and then letting, you know, the search engines and the SEO to kind of marinate and let them do them do their thing. But, you know, it takes time. It's going to take a good solid year uh, for the strategy to work in terms of having enough leads coming in to be able to do the kind of volume and the deals to make, you know, a nice income. So, I mean, I think just being realistic, so many people see what other people are doing, but they don't understand everything that they did behind the scenes and they want those results immediately, but they're not willing to put in the work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you brought that up. You know, it, 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 makes me think of Napoleon Hills and think grow rich, you know, telling the right. story about the, the, the three feet short of gold, right. you know, the guy that I gave that up, book. sold his land and the company that bought it, dug three feet and struck gold. And, and we see that, I mean, in all business owners, you know, right. Um, but definitely in real estate agents, whereas you mentioned, they, they try something for 30, 60 days and I like, go, oh, it didn't work for me. And, and not giving things enough time, you know, right? or they chase the next shiny object. You got to get clear, have a business plan in terms of what you want to do and not, with social media and the internet, it's so easy to chase the next shiny object. And, you know, a really good book that kind of changed me uh, um, is The Pumpkin Plan. I don't know yeah. if you've ever read that one. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And so, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm that guy that had so many different pumpkins growing. And when I, when I read that book, it just, it opened me up to, you know what, I, I got to grow one pumpkin. <laughs> And so I, I weaned off all the other pumpkins and, you know, focus on one thing. And it's, it's just, you know, even the Gary Keller, the one, it's just focusing in and not getting distracted with the next shiny object. Yeah. Love it, man. Love it. So then, um, all right. So, so with your strategy, you're going out there and we'll get into the SEO and the organic stuff. Cause I think that that's, you know, not, not, I mean, it's something that my belief is more, like something we all need to be focusing on. It's so powerful today. You know, when I hear, you know, I'll hear people sometimes when that gets brought up, they're like, oh, that's old school stuff. It doesn't work anymore. You can't compete against so many big companies. And I'm like, dude, the people that I know today, like yourself, that are, that are, that are like, know what they're doing right. are freaking killing it. 
you know, right? Um, and I don't even, I mean, I know about this much. I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but I know if I do something well once, I can get paid over and over and over again for doing it. So, and it doesn't even have to be like, it's just, it's just the pure act of doing it. Yep. Yep. hundred percent, man. So, so, you know, we'll definitely, I definitely want to get to that, but first, man. So, okay. So with, with your strategy today, um, um, you know, so it sounds like, uh, uh, okay, you, you're, you're through your marketing or, or whatever that, that is going out there and doing, you know, you, you have those multiple options, right. Where, um, um, you know, you can come, you'll step in by their house, right. As is. And then what you talk about, you, you relist it as is on the MLS, mm-hmm. um, um, which is great. You know, I mean, that's because then now, especially right now, it's such low inventory, you know, right. That's ways for you or your teammates to leverage your open houses, Facebook ads, sign calls, you know, and so forth. Um, but then for those that the numbers don't work out on those, um, um, and it makes more sense for them to sell retail on the market, mm-hmm. you know, right? Boom, now you have that path for them. Right. I mean, it, it, is that... In, in yeah, it's, you, you got to be a little bit careful depending on how the league comes in, you know, because being an, an, an agent and or investor, people have to like and trust you. And if you violate trust and they don't trust you, it doesn't matter what you say or do, or even the offer you're going to give them, they'll use somebody else. So you have to be a little bit careful when the lead comes on in and you're wearing the investor hat and they don't trust you. And then all of a sudden you're flipping your hat to the retail agent hat. Uh, so it, it depends on you know the rapport that you have with the person, the situation. So every scenario is a little bit different. And sometimes you can just have that open conversation. And a lot of times I'll just say, you know, I'll be completely honest. You don't need me to buy your house in this market. You can sell for retail. Why wouldn't you want to sell retail? And some people at the end of the day with COVID and everything, it doesn't matter. They want a cash offer and a quick close. And others you can talk in and others say, you know, you're right. And then if there's the opportunity, then I'll go the listing route. If I don't feel I have that rapport with the person, or the trust, then I'll give that lead to somebody within our office, knowing that they want to sell, and then they'll go after the listing. So every situation is a little bit different, but again, it's it's that first like and trust, getting rapport to be able to then pivot within those 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 areas to be able to give them. At the end of the day, it's it's not about how much money I can make. It's it's the service that I provide. To how much money can I put in this person's pocket? And is speed and convenience something they're willing to do to give up in regards to price? So that's kind of how I position myself. But the most important thing is just the ability to give uh, the retail, especially the the seller, different options to put the most amount of money in their pocket. Yep, I love it, man. So then um, I'm just trying to to read through here. I got I got. It. You know, my four pages of, of, of notes on, on you here, um, uh, you know, but when it comes to, I was trying to look at your book here. Um, all right. So how to buy one to three properties a month without spending a dime on direct mail, putting uh, bandit signs, chasing deals, the MLS, which again, we'll get into the SEO side of it. Um, uh, uh, but then, so when you're, I mean, are these deals that, that you're then, I mean, you're, you're representing yourself as the investor. So, right. are, I mean, you know, are, you cash them out or are there just for those that are listening to this, that, you know, um, because again, the strat, like people want options and mm-hmm. I buyers have proven that and they plugged a hole that the consumer wasn't getting that us real estate agents weren't giving them. And that's, that's why it's created that popularity. So, you know, it's proven that consumers want this. Now it may not be the plan as you mentioned that they go down, uh, but regardless of which path they, they choose is best for them. People want options, you know, right? Um, um, but then when you are acquiring these, you know, what are some, those that are maybe watching this that are like, you know, well, dude, like I, I don't have the funds to buy them myself. You know, I'm just getting started with this. Or maybe they do have the funds or, you know, get approved for a line of credit or something that they can can access. You know, what, what are some, you know, kind of, you know, either top tips and or, you know, top mistakes to avoid so you don't get yourself into a bad situation? Well, being a licensed agent, and I would imagine, you know, a lot of the listeners are licensed, you got to do things the right way, because doing something the wrong way and jeopardizing my license is not worth it. So I'm always on the cautious side of because I'm always letting them know that I'm a licensed agent. So and that that's never hurt me. A lot of people think that if you disclose that 
you know, you, you could potentially not get the deal. So I think, you know, being upfront and honest with people is the most important thing. And, uh, I, uh, the, the mistakes, the, the one frustration I have right now is there's a lot of people that don't have the money. And so we take everything down ourselves, whether, you know, we've got money and then I've got relationship with relationships with private money lenders here locally that I've been working with forever. And I made a lot of those relationships when I was in the mortgage business. So if you don't have the money, I think the wrong way to do it is a true, you know, wholesaler without, and it's a, it's a, it's a disservice in my opinion to, you know, a seller where you'll put a deal under contract and then you'll try to sell that contract off to somebody, not letting them know. And if you can't get the money or get it sold, then those people, you know, you're canceling on them. So that's a strategy that I don't do. I don't, I don't necessarily wholesale our property. So everything we put under contract, we close on those deals with our own money. Um, but if somebody doesn't have the money, they could partner with somebody that does, or, you know, just work hard to go find those relationships. I mean, there's a ton of people right now that are willing to loan their money out at a 10%. So the, the private people that we have locally, we give, we pay 10% interest with three in this market you know we've never really held on to anything for more than three months but we always pay three months guaranteed interest up front on the closing statement um so you know for the most part we take everything down i do a double closing which costs me a little bit more money but at the end of the day because i'm licensed i want to do things the right way because i don't want to jeopardize my license yeah does yep. that does that answer that yep no that's awesome man i love it so um, and then with that, you guys, when you're like, well, how do I protect myself? Just get with your designated broker, get with your local real estate attorney, you know, right? I mean, all of this can be done with the right disclosures and, and you know, you just got to make sure it's communication, 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 disclose, disclose, right, disclose. Right. And every broker is a little bit different. You know, the broker that I'm with, I mean, they're investor friendly. Some, you know, even the properties that I list, like our broker won't let, let me represent both sides. So if I'm on the listing side of my own property, and I get somebody that calls in, I cannot, I cannot represent both sides. And so I'll just refer that out to somebody in our office and they can represent the other side, even though it's dual agency. So yeah, you just have to work within the confines of your broker in terms of what they're willing to allow you to do. And then once you know that, then it's just, you know, working within that. So, but you know, there's a lot of, with iBuyers now, and a lot of the, all the iBuyers are, are brokers. <laughs> So, you know, a lot of the other brokers now are being a lot more flexible and lenient with working with, in, with the investor agents, because if they're not using me, they're going to be using somebody else. Yep. Yep. Love it. So then, um, you know, what are some best practices, you know, because you talked about the importance of that connection and rapport. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I agree with you when it comes to, to sales and, and, and in the aspect, I mean, that, that's you know, it's like, I, I look at how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie is like, right. you know, the connection Bible. I mean, I reread that book every single year just to make sure that that's always front of mind. Um, uh, you know, but with doing this, you know, how, what are ways that you found that help with that connection and repair, or I'm sorry, in that rapport, because again, like you're coming in as, is the investor, you know, but also you're the agent, you know, right? But the last thing that you want is for them to think of, oh, this person's just trying to take advantage of me, you know, right? So like, what are, what are some important things that you found to kind of manage that connection and rapport, make them feel comfortable and, and develop that trust with them? Well, you nailed it. I mean, it's Dale Carnegie's number one principle and that's just listen. <laughs> I mean, you just, I mean, you, you spend 80% 80, 80 of the time listening and 20% of the time talking and then just fulfilling their need based on what they want. Um, you know, some people it's a quick close and, and no hassle. So at the end of the day, you just got to, you just got to listen and do what's, do what's best for them, not what's best for you and always do the right thing. And at the end of the day, if they trust you, regardless of, of, you know, even if you don't put a deal together and your, your offer is not something that they, accept. I mean, they, they will a lot of times lean on you towards, you know, what's the next best option. And that's where you can pivot a whole lot easier if you have that rapport. But I just, 
I think, you know, listening, uh, I mean, I see a lot of investors go straight in with the contract in hand, you know, they'll walk in the house, like getting them to, I don't bring a contract with me when I go out to look at a property. Um, yep. It's just something that I decided to do early on and, and focus on listening. And then, you know, if I have that rapport, I'm not worried about whether or not. And uh, so, you know, when I'm there, I just, I'm not trying to do the hard close, hard sales sign here and just more or less put on my listening hat and, and see how I can fulfill their needs. Yeah. Love it, man. Um, so then, you know, you talked about uh, 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 having right expectations of, you know, how long the, the, at least the, the strategy can take, you know, and so forth, you know, but speaking to that of, of having realistic expectations, um, um, uh, I'm curious with what is the percent? So, so, you know, somebody reaches out to you, set an appointment, you go meet with them um, um, of those that you take on as a client and you're working with now in some relationship, some capacity, mm -hmm. like what's the percent that end up that you end up taking down and purchasing directly as the investor um, um, and then, you know, versus the percent that end up going the traditional route. So we're, I mean, we're doing one to three properties a month. Um, and it's actually, that's more on the, on the buy side of, of the ones that we buy. So I'd say one in 15 to one in 17 leads that we get, we're getting, we're buying one and we're at least listing one. So we're getting, we're getting about two deals out of 17 leads that come in through our organic SEO. Um, so everything in my cost per, my cost per deal is less than 300 bucks. I know, I know, I know it's kind of hard to believe, but based on my strategy and what I do, and I've done it all, I've done bandit signs, pay-per-click postcards, you name it, I've done it. I've spent thousands of dollars and, you know, as the I buyers have come in and, and even some of the big local investors, they've got monthly budgets of 20 to $40,000 a month. And I just decided early on that I was not going to compete with money. I just, I couldn't do it. And so that's when I changed my strategy when the contractor, you know, bailed on me. I just, I went back to the drawing board because I was kind of at my wits end and out. And to be honest, I was kind of contemplating doing some other things just because I was a little burned out and I was spinning the plates and, and, and living at Home Depot. So um, yeah, we, we generate enough leads to, to buy for every 15 to 17 leads that come in, we're, we're buying a deal and our average profit per deal is anywhere from 12,000 upwards to $50,000 per deal. And it's always kind of somewhere in the middle. So, uh, I mean, you can kind of do the math. It doesn't take, I mean, so we can do about half of what the normal agent does and, and make as much or more money with, with half the amount of time. So then with, with um, essentially two deals out of 17 leads. So mm -hmm. like one being the investment side, one being a list side. Is right. it safe to assume that it's about 50-50 as far as the people that you're at the listing table with that uh, uh, decide to have you purchase their home? There's like 10 of those and then the other 50% decide to go the traditional listing route? I think it's more 75-25, you know, 75% want a retail number, especially in this market. You know, that'll change as the market change changes and it's 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 changed, you know, in the last since COVID hit and inventory levels have dropped. So it just depends on the market that you're in, but I'd say it's a little bit higher. So I'd say 20 to maybe 25%, you know, are willing to take a price that makes sense for us. You know, the other 75% are more on the retail or for sale by owner type people. And of those 75, I, you know, 50%, you know, are ones that, that we've got a good shot at getting a listing on. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and even with that, I mean, those are freaking amazing numbers, you know, all, all the way through. I mean, those are like unheard of numbers. You know, I just heard last week that this encompasses all buyers. As a whole. So, you know, Zillow offers, offer pad, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, uh, 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 can't remember uh, blanking on all the other names of them. Um, um, uh, uh, open door. Open door. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, at least here in Arizona. And there's uh, always, you know, in big cities, Phoenix, Tucson. There's always yeah. you know, two or three big, like individual players as well. And the stat that I heard, and again, a collective of all, you know, all of them. It's not individual, but you know, I heard that. Uh, uh, and again, this is a refreshed, updated stat of last week. Um, but it's five percent. Yeah, right. Of of five percent of those that inquire, they send an offer to. Um, um, uh, only five percent are accepting those. 
and you're talking 25 percent well, 25 are open to it it doesn't mean we're getting a 25 percent acceptance rate we just we've got a shot at those 25 percent whether they're using me or you know an i buyer or somebody like that those are the ones we got a shot at okay i got you I got you. Uh, makes sense. So then, you know, when it comes to, uh, um, you know, jumping into the SEO stuff, because this is, again, you know, something that, man, it, 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 it's always something that's been powerful or as long as it's, it's existed out there. Um, but in my opinion, it's more important today than ever. I mean, if we see all the crap that's going on with Zillow, you know, like I, I had a, a buddy of mine um, uh, that was, like over a thousand testimonials on Zillow, you know, right? Like, like I mean, so much of his business was coming from Zillow, whatever. Um, well, with this recent change in their model, they wiped all of that out. All his thousand testimonials, all of that, like gone overnight. And 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 here in Arizona, or at least in, in Phoenix, you know, we see Phoenix seems to kind of be uh, maybe two songs was this category too, but we seem to be the testing ground for you know, the first place Zillow started doing their their you know I buyer stuff, first place open door launch their I buyer stuff. The offer pads owner founders is, you know, a native here from here. And, um, um, but out here with Zillow, like, like there is no buying leads anymore. You're an approved Zillow agent. Um, uh, it's either 35 or 30% referral fee on, on anything that you close, depending on the price point. Um, and they're cutting out agents like crazy, you know, right. They're only taking like on their back and they're tracking what's your response rate. What's your appointment set appointment conduction client rate. I mean, they're, they're tracking it like a good team leader would track in their mm -hmm. business. Um, but like, if you're not in the top 10%, like you're, you're pretty much getting a cut. So it's becoming a small, narrow, harder to get into avenue. Um, you know, so, so, okay, let's just say pretty soon here in the near future, it's going to be impossible to buy leads from a place like Zillow or, or Trulia. You know, I mean, Facebook, yeah, you can go out there and do Facebook or Google pay-per-click, but those are, you know, uh, uh, you know can be more challenging and, and so forth. Um, so with all that being said, man, I, I truly believe that organic SEO and content marketing and so forth is, is more important than probably ever before for, for us in our industry, you know, um, you know, so man, really excited to pick your brain on this, you know, um, um, I mean, what, what got you involved in this? And then, um, you know, I'd love to just start covering like what, what that looks like, what you're doing, what your top tips are for that. Well, so, you know, this is a whole other story. I'll keep it short. So while I was in the mortgage business and, and as it started to melt down, my wife and I got involved in a network marketing company and I was pretty green to it and just struggled with it. And one night I was just online trying to figure out, you know, how to do this where I didn't have to sit in people's family rooms and living rooms pitching stuff. And it's just, it didn't feel good. So I saw this thing about blog world and it was in Las Vegas. And it was literally, it was 10 o'clock that night and it started at 6 a.m. the next morning. And I, and I woke my wife up and I told her I booked a flight. <laughs> she needed to take me to the airport at 5 a.m. so I could get to Vegas, you know, for, you know, the next morning for this thing called Blog World. And I went there and this was like when WordPress was just starting. It's when, you know, when content marketing really started to, to take form uh, in terms of blogs. And I went there and it just like, I was totally blown away. And it just opened me up to the possibilities of if I put in the work that eventually we could get this thing going. So long and short of it, I came home and just started creating content. And after about a year, my wife's like, what are you doing? Because like nothing's nothing happened. It was literally like a year into it. And I'm just like, I, I believe in this. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I just kept on the path of creating content. And it's it's like the, the book, you know, three feet from gold or whatever. I just kept doing it. And long and short, about 12 months into it, we started getting all these leads and our income in in direct marketing went from like, a thousand bucks a month to 20,000 bucks a month. And it showed me what was possible. So uh, that's what opened me up into knowing the power of creating content and, and just staying the course and knowing that it takes time. And then, so I basically took, you know, a lot of those strategies and now I've rolled it over to the motivated seller side and uh, you know, I'm on, I'm on the carrot platform and I've taken that whole platform to a whole nother level 
in terms of you know just content, 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 and uh, organic SEO. And you know we we get anywhere from probably sixty to eighty you know motivated seller leads a month, which then leads to one to three deals a month. And it's just it's people need to look at if I could say anything. Creating income and content is a income producing activity. And a lot of people don't see it that way. And it's evergreen marketing where if you do something once, eventually, if you do it right and learn, you get paid over and over and over again for doing that. It's like having a bandit sign 24 seven. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Love it, man. So, um, all right. So you're using carrot is, is, um, uh, you know, the software, right. Um, and you know, of course <coughs> there's carrot who we've had Trevor on the podcast, amazing dude, amazing company. Um, and then, you know, you got WordPress, you got, and there's other, you know, like, you know, a lot of agents might have blog platforms on their content or on, I'm sorry, uh, uh, features in their, you know, current website. Um, uh, 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 but with that being said, man, what is like, okay, what, what are some of the most important things, you know, right? Like, um, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to creating that content, the messaging, you know, right, incorporating the call to actions from, you know, keywords and kind of, you know, doing your research before you go out there and put it out there. Because I know that there's, you know, a, a lot that goes into it other than, okay, let me create a video and write some text out and then plop it on this page. Well, consistency is, content and consistency is key. You can never do anything wrong. It's just being consistent for what it is that you do. Uh, the other thing too is so important, and I see agents and I see investors with websites making this mistake. So on any of our pay, any of our websites, other than the home page, what do you think is the most second visited page on the site? And and your 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 site's probably the same way. Well, after the home page or whatever page they land on, what's the second page they go to? Yeah, you know, I I should know this, but I don't. To be honest with you, is it, is your about, your about page. Your about page. Yep. And if your about page is generic and it doesn't, especially for investors, if it doesn't ooze trust and, and local, and if it doesn't get rapport and it's, it's, you know, especially with the carrot website, so many people just keep the canned stuff for their about section. And when people go there, they want to like and trust you. So when the lead comes over, whether you're a real estate agent or an investor, it doesn't matter. You've got to focus in on that about page and make it real and believable and trust and like and, and, and just so, I mean, if you're going to do anything like that's the first page that you should really, really focus on, because regardless of the content you want, I mean, they call it the bounce rate. The bounce rate is if somebody lands on your website and then they view one page and they're gone and that you have what is called a high bounce rate. And so the lower the bounce rate, it means that they're, they're viewing and looking at other pages on your website. And so the more, the more traffic you get to a website, whether it's a retail, and my retail site does really, really well too. And I've, I've basically taken the same concept on the retail side, generating leads, giving them to agents. But um, you know, they land on something on your site and then they usually go over to the about page to see, you know, about you. So uh, you got to focus in on a really good about page. And then it's just a matter of creating content. I mean, as I'm driving around or I think of something, I'll, I'll make a note. You know, I've got one piece of content on our site that was uh, organic to me, not, you know, a carrot piece of content that's that's brought us in over $100,000 within within the last year, just because I did one piece of content that generated probably, I'd say four closed deals off of this one landing page. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But you never know, like the con, it's weird. Some content you put out there, you think it's gonna like hit and Google's gonna take it and it's gonna rank really high and it doesn't. And then other stuff that's just kind of weird, like the some of the long tail stuff that that's not as competitive tends to do better, but you know, there's a lot to it. Uh, you know, Carrot has a really good, they call it the SEO Bible. You can just Google Carrot SEO Bible. And that that is really, really good just to understand SEO and how to do it. And uh, so, you know, I learned a lot from Trevor. He's been a mentor of mine. And, uh, you know, I, I owe a lot to him just because without him, I, I would not be doing what I'm doing now. And uh, I mean, he's taught me a lot. So how do you, you know, I, I know with... <laughs> You know, when I'm talking with realtors, um, 
And, and look, I, I'm the same way with this, you know, being a realtor myself, I think we're, we're, you know, like we're salespeople. We like being face to face. We like, you know, uh, uh, conversing with it. Like we like the action, man. And, and, you know, sometimes uh, we're not always, I don't want to put everybody in the same bucket. So maybe I'll just speak to myself, but this holds true for a lot of realtors. I'm talking to a lot of realtors on my team, coaching clients and, 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 you know, pretty much spend my whole world with just realtors, you know, right. Uh, at this point in my life and, and have the last 15, 16 years. Um, uh, but it's like, look, man, I, you know, I, the creative, like I'm not a creative, you know, right. So it can be hard to sit there and think about, you know, um, um, on that, you know, kind of, the, I guess to get those creative juices flowing. Mm-hmm. And, and this is again, a huge bottleneck that, that happens for me as well as other people that uh, uh, in this space of in, be a blog, whether it be a YouTube video, whether it be a social media post, it's, well, shit, what do I, what do I create content about? You know, right? Like, like, how to know. And again, like you just mentioned, it's, it's that consistency. We don't always know what's going to crush it, you know, right? Um, um, you know, but I'm guessing that there's some rhyme to your reason of, of how you decide what type of content to, to you know, create it, it about. So, what does that look like? How do you how do you know what type of content, you know, to, to even search? Well, the first thing as an agent on the retail side or on the investing side, I would get out Google and I would type in Phoenix Google Map. And you'll pull up a map of your location within Google. It'll have Phoenix and then it's got all the outlying areas. And I would first start with location pages based on where you're at and 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 People, I get this question all the time because I do a lot of coaching. You know, people people say they want to create county pages, and people don't typically search by county. They they search by Mesa, Scottsdale, Glendale. So I would pull up a map, and the first pieces of content that I would create, whether you're an agent and or um, an investor, or all the location pages that people like, you know, Mesa Homes for Sale, and and. When you're in Google, at the very top, when you search for something, if you if you type in like a long tail search term, if you go all the way to the bottom of Google, it will give you like six other search terms that other people are searching for. So you can then find some of the low hanging fruit in terms of ideas. So if you have an idea, look at it and then go all the way to the bottom of Google and look at the six other things that they're recommending and then write those down. And then that will just open you up to all sorts of ideas in terms of content that you create. So, you know, if I have an idea, I'm constantly just going in, I'll type it in, see what's there. And then I'll go to the bottom and see, okay, how can I rank for that keyword? And what's the best long tail keyword to use based on what Google's giving me. So they'll, they'll give you what you need in order to come up with, with really good ideas. Yeah. And then do you, do you use any tools like keywords everywhere or any kind of, you know, you know, I don't like, I just have a gut feeling and okay. Google's made it like, I don't know, like I, I'm an analytical person, but I don't get bogged down in the details of it. I speed and velocity and doing is much more important than, than getting bogged down. Cause there's never any bad content. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, you can sit here, sit here and reach research it all day long, getting a piece of content out there is better than sitting there for, you know, a week trying to figure out what it is that you're going to do. So Google will give you like in the old days, you, you had to do that because Google, you know, you, I forgot the tool that you would use and I used all that and it it can just slow you down because there's so many different options. But I mean, the simplest thing you can do is just type it in and then go to the bottom and it's going to give you probably anywhere from four to six other ideas. Yep. Love it. So then, um, uh, you know, before you, I mean, is this something that, okay, like just as far as like your processes, right? So is this something that, okay, now that I know what this topic's going to be around, you know, like, and then again, I'm just throwing out an example here. Um, uh, so here's the topic. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, first create a video, maybe upload that to YouTube, um, um, and then embed that YouTube video on my blog. Then, whether you're transcribing it or, or then writing a blog of, around what that video is about. So then you're kind of getting the YouTube juice, you know, yep. it, the blog, you know, plus you've got that write up um, and then making sure that you're, you know, then you're you, you yeah, utilizing those a, right keywords. Well, that's a great question. So yesterday I, I had an idea in my head because 
you know, lately in this market that we're in, a lot of people lately are like, I'm just going to go, I'm going to sell my house on my own. I can. And like, you know, I can't like argue with them just because in this market with like no inventory. And so yesterday, if you go to Tucson Homes and Lots and you look in the blog, I did, I did a video yesterday and it's already number one on, on Google for the YouTube video. But then a lot of people like, some people are good at video and some are not. Some people do bad video and some people do great video, but they're not good writers. And so with that piece of content that I did yesterday, I basically did the video and then I, I sent the video over to rev.com and rev.com transcribed the whole thing, put it in a Word doc. Then I posted that Word doc for the content and it's, it's all rich SEO. Uh, stuff. And I literally had a blog post done within, took me about 11 minutes to do the video. And then I rev had it back in like less than an hour. I had that blog post done, you know, within the day and I'm going to kind of keep an eye on it, but the YouTube video is already ranking. And I know, you know, without a doubt that that will be on the first page of Google probably in the next 30 days. Yeah. So it, it literally took me 15 minutes. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, technology, dude, is is, is such an amazing thing, you know, right? Um, uh, it may have been overwhelming, could be a learning curve, but but right. you know, once you're willing to be a student at it and, and commit to incorporating it, holy well, shit. it was like it was, you know, you know who gave me the idea? You. I oh, was really? listening to your podcast of the couple at a Grand Junction. Yep. And it's the one area I have not done. I, I I'm good at the written part, the video, I, like it's something I keep telling myself I got to do better at. And so I list, I was riding my bike, uh, three mornings ago, listening to that podcast. And I'm like, you know what, today's the day. And so, I mean, you, you, that podcast that you did gave me the motivation and I actually reached out to them and had some questions. They were, and I'm drawing a blank on their names. They were awesome. They helped me. And, and that's my goal for this year to get better at video, but it was all because of your podcast. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So then, um, uh, is, is there anything, you know, like, okay, when I do a, you like you upload a video to YouTube, you know, right? Like, obviously, like, I mean, you got the thumbnail, you got the video itself, you got the, the, the title, which is important, description, which is important, but then below, you know, you also have the tags and, and, and the tagging, you know, in there can be an, important. And then when you're, you know, a, a blogging, you know, in the S school, there might be, key, you know, specific keywords, kind of like the tags in the YouTube channel oh. you in there. Have yeah. you found importance in those? Oh, absolutely. So like, you know, with WordPress or even a carrot site at the bottom, there's, there's, you know, an SEO, there's a plugin and a lot of people use Yoast. So if you're on WordPress, like Yoast is that plugin. And then, so there's all the SEO information that you fill in and it gives you like, it, it gives you green, orange, and red. So if you've done a really good job with your SEO, and this is where you don't have to get, you don't have to be an expert. You want as many things to be green and the more green lights you have, the better you've done with your SEO when it comes to uh, a blog post or content. Um, the YouTube side of it, I'm just learning, but it's a lot of the same concepts in terms of tagging. And even in a WordPress or on a carrot site, you can set up tags and categories, which I've done really, really well at because I've made them local to my market. So they're not generic, like stop foreclosure, like, you know, a lot of times they're just pre-filled. But if you have the location, like stop foreclosure in Tucson, that tag or category will end up indexing and just creating another organic listing on the first page of Google. And the ultimate goal is to drive down as much of your competition to the second page. So there's all these different strategies you can do uh, in order to effectively do SEO. But the, the video YouTube side of it is a side that this year I'm committed to learning, but it's a lot of the same principles, but I'm, I wouldn't say I'm an expert when it comes to video and YouTube and, and that, 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 podcast that you had the other day was awesome it taught me a lot yeah yeah and uh, um uh you know when you talk about that yoast plugin like one one that i all uh, love and that i highly recommend for youtube that's youtube specific it's called tube buddy tube buddy uh, yep so you download i mean it's super cheap and then and it sits in your here's the cool thing man it, it lives in your brow like it, it's a it's a plugin you know google chrome plugin mm -hmm. um uh, but first off when you're on anybody else's youtube channel you know, right, or watching any of their videos. Um, um, it gives all the analytics of their video, you know, right? I mean, from a view count, but it'll also show like every keyword that they utilize, you know, like, you know, right? So, you know, 
for a little R&D ripoff and duplicate, you know, it provides okay. that. I then there's that. a tool in there where you can just plug in your title um, and it'll give it a score. You know, ex excellent, good, poor, you know, right? Gives you the velocity, amount of searches on, on a you know, monthly basis. But then what I really love, I mean, all that's great. Um, and then you can like change words and it'll keep flipping back the score. And I found it to be very accurate. Um, but then you can go to uh, uh, the history tab in there um, and it will show other people with those main keywords in their videos, you know, right? Which then you can sit there and see like, okay, well, hey, this, this video got 150,000 views. You know, what was their title? What was, but because of that tool, I can then go into that video and see everything that they used, you know, right? A um, minute tell, same thing. I could tell the, the, the tags to use, what not to use. Like it, it's, it, it eliminates the guesswork, you know, right? Um, uh, with, with the, um, <coughs> uh, you know, the blog content, man, I mean, how important is it to, you know, have call to actions in there? You know, because I mean, you can, you can create, deliver great content, but if they don't know, that you know necessarily what you do or or how to get in touch with you and and I mean how, I mean what what have you found to be the importance with you know supp uh, you know inserting call to actions in the right places and the right call to actions and so forth. Well, it's it's huge. Prior to Carrot, I had an investor site that was doing all right, but it was only ranking well for one keyword, and I wasn't I was getting the traffic, but I wasn't getting the opt ins and. Uh, I was, you know, frustrated just because it was it was good. But long and short of it, you know, when I switched over to Carrot, I mean, it's just an example. I mean, they have they have the hero section on the front. And, you know, a lot of investors, you know, copy the Carrot site if they don't have it. But on any of my sites or pages, um, there's always an opt in and a call to action, and it's really really important. So, um, yeah, I I'm not. I'm not really the expert at it. I just, you know, success leaves clues and yep. I'm modeling what others are doing, but having a call to action, whether you're on the retail side, whether it's an opt-in or, or a link to go, you know, look at homes to get an opt-in on, on, uh, you know, your IDX or whatever it may be, the more links that you have for people to, you know, search and or opt-in, the more leads you're going to get. So, the other thing that's really important is, you know, I'll go look at my analytics for, you know, I'll do content and then I'll start to look on Google to see what's starting to perform or what's performing that could perform a lot better. And so I'll go back to old content. And, and this is this is something that I've done really well with over the last year is going back to old content and then making it better because you might have a piece of content that's getting a lot of traffic, but you're not getting the opt in. And so as you create content, you can go analyze the traffic that you're getting. And if you're not getting the result, then you can tweak up the page. And that's the nice thing about WordPress or, you know, a lot of these platforms, you can go in and make, make the, the tweaks that you need to in order to get the opt-in. So, you know, I do look at my analytics in terms of traffic and, and whether they're converting. And if they're not convert, if they're getting a lot of traffic and not converting, then you can go in and work on it. Yep. Yep. Love the powerful stuff. And I, I know we went pretty deep on that, but I appreciate you sharing it. it it's, it, it's, as you said, success leaves clues and, and, you know, um, um, it's ever evolving. We can always improve, but obviously right. what you're doing is, is crushing it and killing it for you. And, um, uh, so I really appreciate you sharing all that with us, man. So, um, uh, you know, I'm curious with, I mean, you just wrote this new book, uh, uh, uh what, I mean, look, writing books is a lot of work and, and takes a lot of time and, you know, you're busy with other things and so forth. I mean, what, what inspired you to write the book? Well, you know, I was being on Trevor's podcast. I've had a lot of people reaching out wanting help and I love helping people, but I kind of started, had to, I was getting so many people coming at me that I just couldn't help everybody. And I was doing a lot of free help, which I don't mind doing. I just needed to stay focused on my business. And right when COVID hit, you know, right at the beginning when we were all locked down, I mean, everybody was scared and everybody, you know, bunker down in their home for that first two weeks to four weeks. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I just can't sit here. Like I got to do something. And I had the thought in my head just because people were asking me and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to write this book. And I literally went from, from writing the book to publishing it within like, like 60 days. And I just like anything else with content, I just locked myself in my office and within two weeks, I kind of had it written. I found some guy online to help me with the, with the 
the design and the layout. And uh, I just kind of put the thoughts together of, you know, what I did. It's more of a story of, you know, what I did to what I, the mistakes that I made and then what I did to turn my business around to generate enough leads to buy one to three deals a month without spending huge amounts of money. But what motivated me was I wasn't going to let COVID get me and I wasn't going to sit around on the pity potty and I wanted to be active and productive and I wasn't going to waste that time. Yeah. So it sounds like it, it, it's a great roadmap and playbook, you know, for the strategy that, that you're doing today that you talked about, you know, mm -hmm. right. Of being able to go out there and buy down the properties as the investor, you know, and, or, you know, have the option to sell them retail and so forth. So, you know, it sounds like, uh, you know, for anybody that's watching, listening, that's interested in, in implementing it, that same strategy in their business and offering those same options and be able to leverage those same options to grow their business that, that, I mean, that, that book is, uh, again, the roadmap. That's what, I mean, that's what I love books, dude. It's like, you, you, you can spend 20 bucks or 30 bucks or, you know, some, I mean, I just, just got done reading a book that's $450, but, uh, 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 you know, some, they can range a little bit in price, but, it, but, right. it, but for priceless material, man, you get a, you know, in, in that small, tiny investment, you get 30 years of blood, sweat, tears, and, and, you know, people that have invested millions in learning and, you know, for, for you know, it, it, it's so amazing to be able to, it's, it's kind of our, our, our entryway into other people's minds, man. Um, uh, uh, so where, we'll have a link below, but where, where's the best place for anybody to go get this book if they're watching, listening, and they're like, dude, I, I want to do this. I want to learn more about it. But I mean, is it Amazon on the website? Where's the best place to go? Yeah, they can go to Amazon and just Google how to buy one to three, prop one to three properties a month. It's actually, it looks like this right here. And then I also have my coaching site, which is realestatepumpkin.com. Um, it's on there where they pay shipping and then I'll send it out to them. Uh, so they're, they're those two places. And so it's, 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 it's an easy, it's a, it's a, let's see how many pages it's, you know, it's an 80 page read and it's, you know, it's kind of in a story format of, uh, of, of the things that I did and my two, six, one formula, creating content, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Awesome, man. So then, um, also if, if anybody, I mean, we got, we got your, your, uh, uh, we'll have, and again, we'll have a link to Amazon for the book. We'll have a link to your website, a link to your coaching website. So anybody that's watching and listening can, you know, go get the book and then also learn more about your coaching and, you know, be able to reach out to you. Um, are there any other great places that you'd recommend, you know, anybody that's watching or listening to this, if, you know, they want to continue following you down this journey, you know, whether that be social media, whether it be, you know, maybe your blog site, what, what are the best places in addition to, to you know, uh, those, you know, where to get the book uh, uh, that others can follow you to just continue watching you on the success well, journey? On my retail site, uh, it's Tucson Homes and Lots. They can reach out to me there. There's a contact form there, but it's Tucson Homes and Lots. And again, I take, you know, I'm, I'm wearing both hats, retail and, and investor. And all these strategies that we're talking about can be applied on the real estate side, the retail side. And that site as well, same strategies gets a ton. I get about 10,000 unique visitors a month on that site that generates, you know, I get probably two to 300 IDX opt-ins off of that site with the same strategies. So uh, although, you know, we talk more on the investment side, everything that we talked about also can be applied on the retail side, but uh, just Tucson homes and lots and uh, all my contact information's on there. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up. You know, it's one thing that a common thing that people think, Oh, well, my situation is different. My business is different. My industry is different. And, and very rarely, is. you know, yeah. I mean, the, the, the actual process or the product itself might be, you know, differentiate, but you know, what works in one business typically works in the other. And, and uh, um, um, you know, it can be powerful. So, uh, and again, those watching and listening, uh, so wherever you're at, whether you're driving down the, the road, this is on iTunes, or Stitcher, Google Play, or you're watching this on YouTube, if you guys just scroll below, we'll have all of those links, all that information below to make it super easy on you guys. Um, uh, so last question, I know we're going long on time, but last question for you. Um, uh, you know, knowing everything you know now today, uh, if, if, you know, you could uh, today, so, you know, Tyler today could go back and have a conversation with you know, right at right when you're getting out of college, when you entered this space 30 years ago and have that conversation with your younger self and give yourself two pieces of advice um, uh, that you feel would have really just kind of fast forwarded this success tra you know, trajectory that, that you know, you're, you're on, 
what knowing everything else today, what would those two pieces of advice be? Well, I have this talk with myself every day. <laughs> and, you know, I, I did a lot of things right in my late 20s, early 30s, and then I did a lot of things wrong. And at the end of the day, especially when you're 20s and 30s, you really can't see it. I would focus on the balance sheet. And, you know, when, when 2007, 2008 hit, a lot of people weren't prepared and they were over leveraged. And it's, you know, the rich dad, poor dad approach to life. And that's, you know, take the income that you've earned and put it into income producing assets and have no liabilities. And, you know, I had like 30, 40 doors, you know, prior to the meltdown, ended up getting hit pretty hard. And in hindsight, you know, and we've since started to, you know, build up, you know, lots of rentals that are free and clear. And so, you know, that way, when you get, you know, in your late 40s, early 50s, life gets, gets a whole lot easier. So it's doing the really tough things early so you can have freedom and flexibility as you, you know, get up into your, you know, late 40s, 50s, 60s, and life becomes easier rather than harder. So my, 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 my advice, especially for the younger listeners, is focus in on the balance sheet, have no debt, you know, get income producing assets and, and, pay it off as quick as you can. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Don't be spending those commission checks and freaking stupid car. Or exactly. Watching, you know, yeah. uh, 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 you know, and all that bullshit that well, we end up li all living to regret. Yeah. Well, and I'm not, yeah. you know, I didn't have, you know, I'm not that kind of guy per se, but you know, I, I, you know, when I was in the mortgage business and printing money. I, you know, in hindsight, I would have managed that money a whole lot different. Yep. Yep. Awesome stuff. Awesome advice. And, and, and Tyler, I know how busy you are. And the fact they took busy, you know, time out of your busy day to be here with us, man, truly means a lot. This is this has been amazing and it's been an honor, dude. Well, I'm I'm it was a pleasure being on. And again, I've been a, a listener for early on, and uh, you know, I get just a ton of value. Every time I get in a slump, I pull up the GSD mode and it pulls me right out of it. I just put it puts my head right back in the right place. So I thank you. Yeah, 100 percent Appreciate your support, man. Truly means a lot. And those watching and listening. You know, as always, information without implementation is just the start of delusion. Information isn't power. It's taking that information that we learn, executing on that information, uh, implementing that information that then it creates the power for us to go out there and create the life that we know we want and deserve. And Tyler shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you today. Make sure that you t uh, uh, take action on what you learned. Um, so again, you can go out there and, and create that power to create the life that you know you want and deserve. And thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for all your support. And we will see you next time. Peace. Great. Thanks, man. Have a good one. I hope you enjoyed this GSD Mode podcast episode. Now make sure you get shit done and smash that subscribe button now.